What up terrific people how's it going this is Bharat here welcome back to yet another video uh, with the Kota Monk channel we've been uh, asking you guys a lot of questions over the last week or so it could be in Instagram DMs or even LinkedIn uh, DMs I have been asking you guys on what exactly you guys are doing and everything of that sort even in the previous live stream that we had I had this question again and again like what exactly are you guys doing predominantly the answer is that you guys are planning uh, or you guys are I, I already a flutter developer or you guys are, are beginning to learn and understand flutter I'm very happy that you guys chose this channel to learn your flutter and I'm happy to also be answering a very important question in this video the question is very simple should new developers learn flutter because that question is always going to be there I want to answer this as, as early as possible and probably who is going to start learning flutter from now on will find it very very useful so this video I'm going to be fairly short video going to discuss about the entirety of flutter and should you guys learn flutter so let's get into this video and uh, find out the answer for yourself all right if you're new to this channel and you like the content that i'm doing definitely drop a like for this video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel uh, for more more such content on flutter and other programming languages awesome the first point that i have for obviously a lot of new people out there is to understand what is going to be the next step obviously that you are trying to learn flutter and uh, you got to understand what is the roadmap for flutter it's very fairly simple all you have to do is just type a roadmap a flutter roadmap in google and you're taking to a page where it asks it gives you a very clean understanding and layout of what's next for flutter if you see the majority of the things that they have in the roadmap for the next year is to primarily target uh, bug fixes the second important thing they're trying to target is in most of the beta features like uh, flutter for desktop flutter for web they want to get that out in as fast as possible so that leaves us with the choice that it's going to be flutter for mobile still in the same space at, as it is right now this is not going to be uh, exponentially improved rather it's going to be uh, predominantly increasing mode of improvement mainly through bug fixes so that means that that leaves you guys with a very stagnant set of libraries uh, which are not going to be maybe not going to be improved in the sense that uh, I, uh, apart from the bug fixes they're not going to be incrementally going to be added like 100 new libraries coming into the picture nothing of that sort it's going to be very slow kind of new uh, improvement over the next one year so that leaves with all the flutter for mobile developers out there with a little bit of a stagnant mode on the other hand if you uh, if you guys think about the new developers that leaves you guys with a very stable release for the next one year which is a very good thing in, in my opinion because not a lot of things are going to change so whatever you learn now is still going to be relevant the next year uh, not maybe not a lot of changes in terms of libraries in terms of the new plugins that are available but again at the same time you're going to be understanding the entire entire range of flutter over the next year this is for mobile i mean this is again for mobile and uh, if you guys are even want to take a look into flutter for desktop and even flutter for web the same code is also going to be run in that so it's it's a good thing in my opinion so if you guys are your new developer and you're thinking about starting with flutter obviously get started right now and do not get it delayed any further all right so we're done with the pros of what we should be doing again i always look at both sides so i'm going to be taking you guys through another set of features and things that are obviously going to be hinder hindering if you guys are thinking about starting flutter as a new developer so the next thing that you're going to be thinking about is the what OS is this Flutter going to support. Pri primarily now it's going to be Android and iOS for mobile. Uh, desktop is going to be Linux, uh, Windows as well as Mac. For, uh, going forward is obviously going to be Google Chrome as the Flutter web. So the important thing that you got to understand is that what is the changes that are going to come inside these OSs. Primarily, if you look into iOS and Android, there are a ton of new features being added on an exponential basis. That means that if you learn Flutter right now, there are going to be few things that will look a little bit outdated in the next year. Again, I'm not talking about the Flutter as a toolkit, Flutter as a UI toolkit. The material widgets are still going to be there. The material design is still going to be followed for Android. And the Cupertino widgets and the Cupertino um, design is obviously going to be followed for iOS. But the core portion of the Android as well as iOS are going to be seeing a little bit of a different changes. Again, a best example would be the iOS 14. Now, if you see the iOS 14 that came out, iOS 14 now has an option for adding widgets into your home screen. You could have a swipe bar, you could have a little bit of an arranging organizing bars all of that sort and flutter did come out with that in a fairly uh, faster pace to support that but again the num number of things that you're going to see as far as these kind of changes coming into ios as well as android is going to be high 
So what we are seeing with the Flutter roadmap is to support bug fixes and at the same time concentrate on the beta features only. So my assumption is that I'm not really sure what's going to happen, but my assumption is that they are going to be supporting for all these OSs, the base OS, but a little bit of that might be a little bit of delay and lag in how much they're going to be supporting for the newer releases of the individual OSs. So what I'm trying to again put here is that if you guys learn Flutter now, do not hesitate, start now itself in case you find it little bit lagging behind in terms of the native uh, native kind of a framework that is being used for building all these uh, uh, native applications just just give it a little bit of a mix try to understand how the native code also works so that you can go into your flutter package go to your uh, android or your ios packages libraries and just make a little bit of changes to support those kind of new stuff and uh, that's pretty much what i had with this section of the pros and the cons now, if you guys are thinking about starting as a new developer and wanting to get a new job as fast as possible, I would actually have a very good recommendation for everybody who's thinking of doing that. The first recommendation is to obviously not rush into learning with Flutter. Uh, the Flutter is ever changing. There's going to be there is going to be no UI toolkit like that, where it's just going to be one uh, one kind of a, a structure and it's not going to change forever. Nothing is like that. Flutter is ever changing. Not so long ago, recently I actually went came across a new kind of a library inside flutter which reduces the amount of code you write for flutter meaning that if you thought that if you are from a native background like me whatever code you wrote for android was very very huge like you write thousand line of code to run a very simple application now from there i am now writing maybe 100 line of code to run a simple application now if you are like if you if you saw the library that i i will try to link it in the description i completely forgot what the name of the library is if you if you go through this library that is supported for flat right now you will run an application with just 10 line of code so that's how much faster things are going to be changing especially when you have an open source ui toolkit so do not get stagnated with one stuff like if you're thinking about doing something in six months try to do it under that try to do it in four months try to do it in three months when you have a faster cadence to yourself you set challenges to yourself you'll be able to complete it next point do not try to also get stagnated in your future path if you thought flutter is done do not think that to yourself that i'm done with flutter i'm going to become a master flutter developer you will not become a master flutter developer until you learn the native code so just go around understanding the basics of native like android native ios native maybe if you want to understand how the windows native works you could try that as well how to build windows applications there are a lot of things that you can understand from that and a lot of GUI applications that you will be building in case you're going to be building is primarily going to be around the same ideas of widgets and layouts and things like that. So pretty much fast, you'll get you'll catch all these things much, much more faster. Third point, obviously do not understand, do not think that over the period of next five years, Flutter is always going to be ever increasing in, in its popularity. Uh, to be very, very honest, the Flutter started with a very big bang in terms of the number of developers adopting it. And it is kind of in an upward, upward journey at the moment. A lot of new developers are looking into it. Some are dropping out because of the probably some, most probably these are experienced developers who know that this is just the UI toolkit, not anything more than that. But the new developers are still getting attracted towards it primarily because of the hype around it and that's my opinion if you guys are going to be withstanding that hype that's where the real success comes from so these are my three important recommendations and also i gave you guys kind of a factual understanding of what is happening with flutter and what is going to be the change with respect to the native and native ios as well as native android so these are the important points i want to discuss as part of this video if you like this video you know what to do drop a like as well as subscribe to the channel and i'll meet you guys in the next video i've got a lot of things uh, planned up again it's going to be interesting to see how you guys respond until then i'll meet you there uh, Bharat, obviously peace out have a super awesome day